thanks for joining us for this November edition of Pocono Mountains Magazine. I'm Brianna Strunk. It's getting cold outside, and if you're looking to escape the weather for just a little bit, come on into one of the Poconos Indoor Water Park Resorts. Here at Great Wolf Lodge, there's tons to do for the adults and, of course, the kids and kids at heart. Isn't that right, Jim? Yeah, Brianna, you got me pegged right. I'm a kid at heart, and I love to bring the family here to Great Wolf Lodge and all the other indoor water parks in the Poconos because each of them is signed on to the Pocono Promise, which means they're following all the public health guidelines that are necessary to make sure you and your family have a safe and fun time. Now, there's a lot more to go on the show, but first we want to show you what's been making headlines in the Poconos. Remember last month when we introduced you to the Rex at Promised Land? Well, Escape Brooklyn stopped by to visit the new hotel and adventure all around the area, stopping by lots of great spots, including the State Park and Grant's Woods at the Settlers Inn in Hawley. WTAJ-TV recently visited the Pocono Mountains and took a Polaris slingshot for a ride. A mix between a motorcycle and sports car, this is a unique way to experience the region. If you're not familiar with the area, no worries. Pocono Slingshot Rentals will hook you up with recommended routes before you hit the open road. And the ribbon was cut on the new St. Luke's Carbon Campus in late October. The new hospital has four stories and 80 private rooms, as well as an emergency room, operating rooms, and other services to make this the newest hospital construction project for Carbon County in more than 60 years. In the last year, we've seen just incredible demand to our destination, which has been fantastic. It almost seems like there's been such pent up demand where people want to get out. WBRE TV stopped by Great Wolf Lodge to find out how business is recovering from the COVID-19 pandemic. Great Wolf's general manager says guests are eager to visit the indoor water park and other on property attractions, which are open year round. So you want to get into short-term rentals. Hey everyone, it's Jim Hamill again here with the final part in our three-part series about short-term rentals and everything that you need to know about how it affects the local economy here in the Poconos and the do's and don'ts of short-term rentals. So we are here at Wonder, a uh, multi-unit rental in downtown Honesdale where families or couples can come stay and adventure out into the Poconos right from this location. So we wanted to share with you a checklist that we created along with some realtors that'll help you understand some of the do's and some of the don'ts when you're looking to get into the short-term rental game. We talked to some of the pros and here's what they had to say. Welcome to my cabin. Sergei Pogrobniak shows off his rental cabin, Serhi cabin. Kitchen. Nice and uh, bright. At Arrowhead Lake, a private community in Monroe County, Sergey knows a thing or two about handling short-term rentals, all from first-hand experience. Over the last year, it was pretty busy and uh, a lot of work, actually. A, a lot of people staying. There are indeed a lot of people staying at a growing number of rentals in the Poconos region. Hundreds more owners now choosing to rent on platforms like Airbnb and Verbo. And Sergey cautions, it's not as simple as it may seem. If you're thinking that you're just gonna buy a house and oh, I'm gonna start renting, it's not gonna work out that way. Do your research. That's the big tip from the pros like Sergey. And that leads us to the following list of things you need to know if you're going to run a short-term rental. Number one, know your zoning. Zoning is the very first thing. Are you zoned correctly? And you might be zoned correctly last week, but you're not zoned correctly this week. Over here we have the fire pit. Jenny Raddick is both in the real estate game and the short-term rental game, and strongly suggests doing the due diligence to ensure your property is good to go with either the municipality and or the homeowners association if you're located in a private community. Maybe you should call the municipality in which this house resides just to see baseline is it zoned correctly. Once you know if you're allowed to have a short-term rental and the rules and regulations involved, checklist item number two, know your neighbors. We have to think about garbage, we have to think about noise, we have to think about even the guests going for a walk around with their dogs. I mean, are their dogs friendly? There's just a lot that goes into keeping our neighbors happy. Over at Arrowhead Lake, Sergey chose to have a smaller house so he can control how many people stay at one time. You shouldn't just 
buy a huge house and pack it with people because that definitely you're asking for disaster. Number three, know your own abilities. And number four, know your finances. Both are critical to making sure your short-term rental is sustainable. You have to think about the linen turnovers. You have to think about who's going to be cleaning it, who's going to be doing the major maintenance of it, cleaning out the gutters, raking, lawn mowing, all of these things. You have your hands full with your own home, and here's a whole nother home. So you have to figure out, are you going to be doing this? Are you going to be paying someone to do this? How much does that cut into the bottom line that you need to bring home? Next, number five, assemble a village. This means making sure you have legal representation, marketing, and all the other pieces of the puzzle that will make operating a short-term rental run smoothly. Realtors, your lawyer, I mean, absolutely, legal counsel is, is key. Finally, number six, know your takeaway. After you spend money on keeping the rental running, what's left over? And don't forget that income gets taxed. Both Radic and Pogrebniak are happy they've gone down the road of renting to short-term renters and also glad they've done it by the book. Yeah. You can too. Just head to PoconoRealtors.com. There you can find more videos and resources for all your short-term rental needs. Jim Hamill for the Pocono Television Network. Coming up, we're heading to a farm that you're invited to come visit here in the Poconos, but this isn't just any farm. Let's explore together one of the secrets of Jim Thorpe, Ray Street. Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources has a program called Leave No Trace. Here in the Pocono Mountains, we're asking all of our guests to honor that program. Plan ahead and prepare. Travel in smaller groups when possible. Travel and camp on existing sites and pathways. Dispose of your waste properly. Leave what you find. Minimize campfire impacts. And respect wildlife. next story we're showing you around a farm in the Poconos. Check out these scenic views, but this isn't just any farm. Let's go check it out. This is Minnie, Minnie Me, and the little one is Chateau Margot. Welcome to Mary Baxter's 72 acre oasis. Pohopico Creek Alpacas in Effort is home to more than 20 alpacas, ranging in age from 10 days to 20 years old. It's just a very unique experience. You don't normally see an alpaca farm around. We gotta share the love here. You're invited to come spend time with the alpacas, even feed them some treats. Just beware of Sunkist. She'll try to eat all the carrots. I really do enjoy seeing the enthusiasm and the fun that uh, the kids are having and, and even the adults. Mary, a local real estate broker, fell in love with the property eight years ago when it was for sale. She immediately knew this was the perfect place to start her dream, raising alpacas to breed and sell. And I don't really know how I got onto alpacas, but I did. I did research. I volunteered at shows. Um, I went to different farms, talked to owners, met the animals. And frankly, when you meet the animals, it's kind of a done deal. But I really did feel I had to do my uh, due diligence. Related to the camel and llama, alpacas are smart, calm, and relatively low maintenance. And yes, what you've heard is true. They tend to spit. An alpaca is uh, a domesticated animal, uh, indigenous to South America up in the Andes Mountains. So they are high altitude, cold weather animals. They like the cold more than they like the heat. Alpacas are known for their high quality fleece, said to be warmer than wool. 
After an annual shearing or haircut, each alpaca produces 8 to 10 pounds of fleece. It's odor resistant, it's thermoregulating. The fleece is also hyperallergenic. The fleece is processed, then infused into items that you can buy here at Pohopico Creek, including socks, gloves, throws, yarn, and felted soap. You'll know what animal the product came from. Uh, it's very, very soft. You're not going to find that in a store. And you are supporting a bit of our agriculture. A serene spot to shop, socialize, and simply sit for some time. So it is a whole lot of fun and it is really satisfying for me. As you can see, getting started on my Christmas shopping, we should mention that the farm operates by appointment only. If you're coming just to visit the store, you can call in advance to book your appointment. If you're coming to interact with the alpacas, you could go online to book your spot. For the Pocono Television Network, I'm Brianna Strunk. Hola, I'm here in Jim Thorpe, the beautiful gem of the Poconos. Let's discover together what's going on on historical Ray Street. Do you know why it is called Ray Street? And no, it is not about races. Let's find out. Race is another word for waterway. And as you know, the creek runs under this town. Jim Thorpe was actually built on top of the creek. They called it the arch, and it flows through actually directly under the corner of this property, through the parking lot, down Ray Street. Our first stop is at Everything Nice Gift Shop to meet Beth, the owner, who tells us about the people who visit Jim Thorpe and the unique shopping experience they have in her shop and in other local shops. When you get something for your home or you get something for yourself or a gift for Christmas or birthday gifts, people say, oh my gosh, where did you find this? This is so neat. We look outside the box and try not to find things that you're gonna find at other shops. It's the people that come here that honestly make this town. Everybody is here for fun. Everybody is in a good mood. Next is Stitch Craft. Let's go in and discover what this shop is about. So we're a family-run business um, embroidery store where we do all the embroidery on site and that's what's unique about us. We have a retail store where you can come and shop and in addition to that we do um, custom work anywhere from you want a personal gift, monogramming, personalization to hey you have a business, you want a business logo put on apparel, that's what we do right here. <laughs> And if you want to experience Christmas at any time of the year, Jingle Bells is the shop to go. Let's do it together. For the most part, it's always Christmas. Uh, we do bring in a few seasonal items here and there, but we are Christmas year round. If you love Christmas as much as I do, you won't want to leave this store. It has unique things that I haven't seen anywhere else. We have German ornaments as well as German cuckoo clocks. And we just have a very unique selection of uh, holiday decor and ornaments that you wouldn't necessarily see in your box stores. I also discovered a bed and breakfast. Michael and Jeffrey are the owners of the Dolan House, a charming place full of history where you can travel through time. So the history on this particular house, the Dolan House, is really a unique history. 1888, John Dolan had a noted Philadelphia architect design and build this house for him. But what's unique about it is a lot of that original woodwork and features remaining to this day. Today, the past and the present mix in this unique place with what their owners have brought through their travels around the world and from their farm to table breakfast delicacies. Much like when Jeffrey goes to the farm, that's what's on the table tomorrow. When we were traveling internationally, that's what came back to the house. And race is a special street for the owners of these businesses. Most people say it's the most beautiful street in town where it looks like a little European street. They have fun on this street, they find unique products. There's so much history on this street with the church, um, with the stone row buildings themselves. People often will say to me, wow, this is like a little hidden treasure in Jim Thorpe. We never knew this was here and we've been here many times. It's very charming, very beautiful. All the colors are nice and bright. Perhaps one of the coolest evolutions of Ray Street, if I can say, would be that right now it's home to a, a variety of you really unique shops and galleries. There's the pickle shop, there's the Ecuadorian fabric shop, there's Moya, 
there's a variety of shops there that you don't find everywhere else. That's part of the flavor of Ray Street, and that's part of what makes Jim Thorpe special. And now we know a little bit more about Ray Street. I'm going to do here all my Christmas shopping, have dinner, and book in the bed and breakfast, all in one street. And you should do the same thing too. Christina Luna for Pocono Television Network. Coming up on Pocono Mountains Magazine. Small Business Saturday is right around the corner and we're taking you inside some of our favorite shops in the Poconos, guaranteed to fill your Christmas gift list needs. Hey, it's Jim here at the Varsity Room Speakeasy at the Tom Quick Inn in Milford. And this is one of five properties now Milford Hospitality is running in town with several more on the way. We'll give you the full story coming up on Pocono Mountains Magazine. Your health has never been more important. That's why Lehigh Valley Health Network is making it easier than ever to take control with MyLVHN, your digital health partner. MyLVHN allows you to schedule appointments right from the palm of your hand, message your doctor questions, and even see an LVHN provider from the comfort of your home through video visits. With MyLVHN, you have on-demand access to your health anytime, anywhere. To learn more or to sign up, visit lvhn.org slash mylvhn. It's a classic R&B concert, Saturday, December 11th at the Kalahari Resort, starring Peebo Bryson. The Manhattans featuring Gerald Austin. Russell Tompkins Jr. and the New Stylistics. Tavares. And Atlantic Star. Don't miss this big concert. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster.com and rmbweekend.com or charge by phone 888-210-8009. That's 888-210-8009. Hey everyone, it's Jim Hamill here in downtown Milford at the historic Milford Theater, which has been around for about a century or so, and this year hosting the Black Bear Film Festival. And just within the last year, Milford Hospitality Group has pumped a lot of money into this place, bringing it up to modern day technology and seating and a lot of other things, as well as taking over a number of other properties in town from restaurants, bars, and hotels. We wanted to show you what Milford Hospitality is doing for this town. It was the triumphant return for the Milford Theater. Film lovers out for the grand reopening of the iconic space after months of hard work to give this historic theater a facelift. Their jaws were on the floor when they walked in because you know, Black Bear has, uh, this was their 22nd year of celebrating films and having the festival here in Milford. And obviously COVID, you know, we didn't have any festival last year. Um, so the last time they were really in here was when it was what it was. Now the theater has 250 brand new seats. The screen is new too. And the audio visual equipment is designed for the best experience possible. That's something the new owners of the theater and a half dozen other properties in Milford are doing a lot of these days. Um, we started with the Jive Bar and Lounge, which has been established, small corner bar in Milford here on Broad Street. And then just quickly started, you know, with Tom Quick. Laura Villa, Hotel for Cher, 403, um, Bar Louie, and then obviously the Milford Theater is a huge piece of the portfolio. So just kind of reviving Milford after the pandemic is super awesome. Gary Wilson and Beth O'Neill are just two of the many team members for Milford Hospitality Group, revamping some of the key spots in Milford to build upon Milford's appeal as a destination. We just see a future in hospitality and entertainment for Milford, and that's kind of what we're building with the theater, with the speakeasy, with the golf club, just instead of creating a day, creating a weekend, creating a destination and making it more of a weekend getaway and not just an overnight stay. Milford Hospitality not only has the Tom Quick Inn, Jive Bar and Lounge, and Hotel Faucher with Bar Louie on its roster, but also the historic Forest Hall, which served as part of the Yale School of Forestry and will eventually have life breathed back into this opulent hall for events like weddings and banquets. But the centerpiece of Milford Hospitality's repertoire remains the theater. It was always designed to be the hub, the center of everything that we're building so that um, at every turn we're focused on sending people to our restaurants, our bars, and our beautiful other properties and also to all the shops in town. And the reviews for the renovation are in. The team that worked on this theater did a fabulous job and they were working up literally to the last moment 
It's very high tech. Uh, the, all the seats have been changed out. Redid the walls and the screen. All of the projection and sound is top of the line. I mean, they, they, they spared no expense for this theater. The Milford Theater's upgrades include a brand new bar in the lobby that serves beer, wine, and spirits, plus your typical movie concessions. And the theater itself will be serving up a lot of programming. A little bit of everything. The programming really does span the entire gamut of, uh, honestly, the arts. So everything from we had a troupe of 15 young performers here getting ready for a Kander and Ebb celebration cabaret style pr musical performance. We'll have uh, Vanessa Carlton, a Grammy nominated singer coming on November 20th, which is a completely sold out show. Films will be shown every other weekend. Tickets can be purchased on MilfordTheater.com. And when the show's over, or you're waiting for showtime, the numerous other properties under Milford Hospitality's brand are ready to make your visit to Milford a special one. Just take the Varsity Speakeasy at the Tom Quick Inn, for instance. This room was the Varsity room, the original Tom Quick. You can tell by there's a lot of uh, Varsity pennants around the room. The wood is all old etched. Um, we kind of taken it from a banquet bar and recreated it to what we're calling now is the Varsity Speakeasy. You know, using it as a speakeasy backdoor entrance, super dark, super cool, intimate, um, low lighting, candlelight, smoked cocktails, craft cocktails, just a super cool environment. It only fits, you know, 20, 22 people. So it's really kind of an exclusive experience back here. All this investment in Milford is not just one company. Others, including Better World, have laid stake on Milford's future. The store and cafe on Broad Street is a healthy living store meets foodie paradise, organic coffee and tea, and tons more to complement the big moment Milford is having now and for years to come. Jim Hamill for the Pocono Television Network. Small Business Saturday is coming up on November 27th. It's the perfect opportunity to support local businesses while getting a head start on your Christmas shopping. And here in the Poconos, we have plenty of unique boutique shops to fulfill your holiday needs. And today I want to show you around a few of my favorites here in downtown Stroudsburg. Pocono Soap is a gift shop here in downtown Stroudsburg where we sell all sorts of handmade soaps, sprays, lotions that we make right here, just about five minutes away. Pocono Soap is in the business of relaxation, uh, aromatherapy. We want people to come in here and have an experience. Small Business Saturday is a day to celebrate all the local businesses in your community. Store owners usually put out a spread for you. There's often refreshments, specials. Sometimes you'll get a good deal. You're almost always gonna get new products. Uh, it's kind of a kickoff for the holiday season. Found a few stocking stuffers. Not going to tell you who they're for though because those people might be watching. We're known for having really affordable gifts under $20, which is perfect for teachers, bus drivers, um, office staff. We really try to make it accessible and affordable for everybody to come shop local. Our next stop is a place you have to visit when shopping for that special lady in your life. We have been at the apple tree dressing women of substance and style for 40 years. I think one of our hallmarks here at the apple tree on Main is that we have very beautiful, special, and unique clothing for women. We have personal stylists that will walk through the store, find you everything that you would like. We have the lightest in jeans. We have beautiful tops. We have gorgeous sweaters from all over the world. We have cocktail dresses, evening dresses, boots, shoes, gloves. I'll take one of uh, everything. And for Small Business Saturday, we have very, very special features that are going to happen that day only. And they are going to be many gifts under $100. And when you're exploring a downtown district in the Poconos, make sure you venture down the side streets where you'll find plenty of hidden gems. We're here at the Potting Shed. We're located just a short distance from downtown Stroudsburg. We're on Ann Street. We have everyday gifts. We have plants. We have pots. I love this owl planter. 
We have household linens, um, silk florals, arrangements, gifts galore, and we just went into a whole line of books. We have products here that you can probably buy on Amazon, but the fun of coming here is one, you can touch it, you can feel it, and we will make you feel welcomed at home and make your shopping experience so much better than clicking a button. So the small businesses, that's what you get from them. Come out, visit your local small business because it's definitely going to be an experience you're not gonna forget. After a day of shopping, unwind with some wine. We're at Tolino's, one of my favorite wineries here in downtown Stroudsburg, and they're offering 15% off bottles on Small Business Saturday. Thanks for coming along with me on my shopping journey today. We hope to see you here in the Poconos soon. For the Pocono Television Network, I'm Brianna Strunk. Hi everyone, Chris Barrett here from Pocono Mountains Magazine. Please join us for a segment on diversity, equity, and inclusion. You don't want to miss it. And we're heading way, way up, giving you a bird's eye view of the Poconos. And this unforgettable experience could be all yours. We're trying to see Chris and Molly. Yeah, they're so busy with this magazine. Kevin, I need you. Yeah, Molly, it's a third year and we did it. Yeah, third time's the charm. We're showing even more great restaurants, outdoor adventures, and girls' getaways. And all the new stuff. Yeah, new stuff. Why not get your own copy of Pocono Mountains Magazine at PoconoMountains.com. Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Chris Barrett for the Pocono Television Network. We're so happy to have you here. We're also happy to have some great guests who are gonna walk us through some of the things that we've been hearing lately about diversity, equity, and inclusion. One of the things we've always tried to do here at PTN is to talk about subjects that are important to not only you, but our full community. We know now that COVID has really challenged us in many, many different ways, and it's really brought to light uh, some of the things that we've been seeing with diversity, equity, and, and inclusion that's left us with a lot of questions. So the best way to really address those is to ask people who know about it and to learn from them. They can really educate us. And that's why we have all these wonderful folks here. And the I'd like to first introduce them and then go to questions. First to my left is uh, Damari Bonilla, who is a good friend. She works with uh, the Pocono Mountains Visitors Bureau. We're happy to have her here. Uh, also to uh, Tamika Patterson, Tamiko, it's great to have you with us too. And Christina Caceres. Krista. Krista, oh, Krista <laughs> Caceres. I knew that was gonna happen. We were all going through names beforehand. <laughs> so there we it's go. Okay. But Damari, I'm gonna go to you first. Um, please help us understand what DE&I is. So first of all, it's a mouthful. When you use the acronym, it seems simple enough, but when you break it down, diversity, equity, and inclusion are three different terminologies and three different processes that align with what we often refer to as representation matters. And you might hear representation matters in the news, on social media, particularly from women, from people of color, individuals that identify as uh, marginalized communities. Diversity is about ensuring that whoever is in the room in a particular space represents differences in terms of race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, uh, in terms of marital status, family dynamics, socioeconomic status, and thought diversity. We don't all have to think the same or agree on certain subjects. We should not actually, right? We put the best product forward, the best work forward when we have differences of opinions because our lived experiences are different. So you can have two individuals that grow up in the same house household and not have similar views and not be part of the same organizations, etc. So that's diversity. When we talk about inclusion, we are looking at the reality that you can have a diverse population. At, at the eye, at a glance, people might look different, they might speak different and represent those different demographic groups that I referred to, yet you don't have an inclusive environment. They don't feel like they belong, they don't feel like their voice is heard, they don't feel represented. And then equity is about ensuring that individuals have access, opportunity, and the space to be able to thrive. 
So it's not just about saying we are providing equality. Equality means we're giving everybody the same resources. Not every individual needs the same resources. There are individuals from underserved communities who may need more than someone from an affluent community. So, and thank you, Damari, so much for giving us those definitions. And Tamiko, I want to turn to you and ask you, why are these conversations important within organizations? Some of the things that Damari just told us about. We are struggling in our community, and what Dr. Damari said, you know, we are a diverse community. We are, um, we have a lot of different uh, populations. We have an increasing number of African Americans, um, Latino uh, Americans, Hispanic, you know, all the different populations we have, but what we don't have is inclus inclusion. And people don't realize that, right? They keep talking about how diverse we are, but they're forgetting the inclusive part. So we need to continue to have those discussions so that people can realize that until we have inclusion, there is you know, no equity. Um, we have people who have different abilities that we need to address. We have different uh, socioeconomic uh, backgrounds that we need to deal with. And um, so until we have those discussions and admit that we have an issue, we won't get to any solutions. And, those, and that's a real distinction between diversity and equity and inclusion. Which, which is really interesting. Um, have you found that there are times it's important to balance the goals of DE&I initiatives, and is it sometimes a slow process? Absolutely. I, uh, I thought when we started this work that it would be easy, right? It's a no-brainer. We know we have issues in the community that we need to address. And I was surprised that people were opposed to DE&I initiatives. And, and I realized that people thought that something was being taken away from them. And, and that's the point we need to get to, and Dr. Demary mentioned that as well. Equity doesn't mean taking away from someone or something. It means ensuring that everyone has the access to opportunities so that they can succeed like others. So we, um, it, it is a slow process. We need to continue to push forward and to make sure that people understand that nothing's being taken away. But we need to make sure that we ensure that everyone has the same opportunities to move forward. I'm learning a lot from this. I hope everybody is there too. And Krista, I'm gonna turn to you if, if I could. Um, there have been headlines about school districts and they've been concerning. And we wanted to give some air time to talk a little bit about what's been happening in school districts. And Tamiko, I know you, you've been involved in that as well. Um, and and I, I wanted to ask you, um, are we making strides there in our school districts? What's really happening? Well, the, the cause is something that we've seen throughout history, right? Where there are groups of people who may feel that they're not willing to embrace change. Um, but that's really what America's all about. That's what life is all about, right? It's right. all about change. And so we have seen it through the civil rights movement. We've seen it with the women's movement. We've seen it with now the LGBTQ plus I, I community, excuse me. Um, and now we're seeing it with our young people. Um, one thing we have to be careful um, and, and, and make sure that we keep in the forefront of our mind is that at the end of the day, we are all taxpayers in our community. And when we have children or whether we don't have children, we should want that our children get the best foot forward. And that comes with feeling like they belong. In every home there's a mirror, right? Because we all wanna see ourselves. The same thing applies in our schools, the same thing applies in our community. It's just important that we don't let um, the fears of some override the common sense aspect of what DEI brings to the table. And that's really the fear issue. Right, and there's really nothing to fear. Absolutely nothing to fear. Again, people were worried about integrating schools back in the 50s and 60s, right? right? People were worried about, oh, well, you know, if this person is dressed this way using a different restroom, oh my goodness. When in reality, we should all be concerned about ourselves and respecting the differences of others as opposed to being fearful of those differences because we all want the same things, right? Regardless of what families look like, we all want the same things for our children. We all want our communities to thrive and be economically sound. And we, again, just must remember that. And, and, when, and I hear, as I hear this, Damar, I want to turn to you, because to me, diversity means strength. And, and don't you really feel that? Don't we all, don't you feel that? We're seeing a shift in paradigms of 
individuals who have been in positions of power and authority and when they see individuals that look like the women of color that are at either side of you today, they have that fear that Krista was referring to. They have that uncertainty that Tamiko was referring to because it feels like they are no longer in control. That's a reality that we have to talk about. We can't get into the details because that would take us quite a while, but based on what Tamiko was talking about, we do have to continue to ed educate individuals, let them know how this has transpired over history, as Krista was talking about, so that people can see that change is good, that there are benefits to change, and the reality is that having individuals like us at the table is a strength because we are speaking up for the needs of those students and families that nobody's speaking up for or considering if we're not at the table. And, and the point is, it's not about me or us. We've already fought that fight, but it really is, as she was referring to, about the children, the young people in our community who, by the way, are more comfortable with diversity than we are, who celebrate the differences, who are comfortable with terminology that makes somebody of a different generation really uncomfortable. And Chris, if I may, if I may touch, please, please. Yeah, I just wanted to, to, to touch on um, what uh, uh, Demary mentioned, and it's true. I think statistically, when you look at it, um, the boomer generation had about 78 percent white majority, right? I hate to use the word, the terms majority and minority, but statistically that's what I'm we're dealing boomer, with, so. right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, contrast that with now the, the millennial generation, we're looking at 54%. So there's a stark difference, right? And, and just to kind of you know, piggyback point. on what she's saying, there's, there's, there's a difference in how they see things, what they're used to. Right. And when it comes to education, I know we're not gonna touch too much on that, but that's one of the fights in our school system is to stop people from learning about the history. Um, and as it, when it comes to education, we want our children to receive a full account of history. We don't necessarily want to get into every ugly piece of it, but we want them to know that our ancestors and those of others you know, in the room and those of other marginalized communities have contributed to the beauty of this nation. Imagine growing up and all you've heard is the people that look like you conceived it, built it, did everything, created everything, and no other person, no other type of person contributed to the beauty of our country. You would think differently too, and you'd be a little resistant to people wanting to change what that looks like. But the reality is we know that's not true. And so it is extremely important that our educational system properly encourages everyone, everyone. And highlights all the contributions Absolutely. that everybody has made to our civilization. Absolutely. Right and now. that's simply, that's really at the crux of what we're asking for. If you don't mind, we were talking a little bit before and about our, our ancestors. Mm -hmm. And my uh, grandmother was Italian mm -hmm. and raised me. I came from Hazleton. Anyway, long story short, we were talking about when they came over to the United States and they were immigrants, how they were treated. Absolutely. And there so, were a lot of parallels, right? Absolutely. W one thing that people forget, and that's another reason why history is important and it, that these things are taught in school, is that the Irish community, the Japanese community, the Italian community, you know, Jewish community, all face similar hardships uh, when, when wanting to immigrate to this nation. Um, some of them had to change their surname either by choice or by force, as you mentioned well, um, the story did. with your grandmother. Right, right. Yeah, tell us. So, and, and actually my grandmother, um, when she came over, her name was Romano, and it was changed at Ellis Island to Roman, mm -hmm. to Americanize her. Mm -hmm. So that was really kind of uh, something that struck me, mm -hmm. and, and I think a lot of people say that this is the first time Hazleton is really of one ethnic uh, composition with a lot of Latinos. That's not really true. Right. You know, th it, it's just been an evolution of societies and cultures, and that has really made us much stronger. Absolutely. Yeah, well, but Chris, I'll jump in real please. quick and, and just piggyback on what Krista was talking about because the recent census is, is painting a picture for us of, of what she's referring to and what many of us have known in, as we lead in the community and broadly. In addition, the differences in terms of population shifts have caused intersectionalities that we have not seen before. And so while we know that interracial marriages have shifted the way people self-identify, some of those categories that we use to identify people on forms and in school systems and other systems, you can't always pinpoint exactly who someone, who someone is by filling out a form. I don't always see myself 
in, in a form, right? Sometimes you have white, you have black, you have other, because Hispanics are not, an, an, are not a race, we're an ethnicity, we're, we're an ethnic group. And so that further complicates the discussion. Intersectionalities, right now in New York, we're doing some work with the Jewish Latino and Jewish black community. That boggles, to her point, somebody's mind, around, wait, what do you mean? These are two different communities. No, not really. There are individuals that because of marriage, because of um, seeking asylum, because of different life experiences and traumas and just dynamics that we do not account for in our own lived experience are now coming together in a way we haven't seen before to the magnitude that we're seeing it. Well, I, I, this is, we could talk about this forever, but I, I have to unfortunately end this segment, but I wanna ask all of you to come back again because I think this is such an important topic um, that I wanna really cover it more in depth. And I, this is something we really wanna do for our community. So I hope you'll join us again to talk about these things. And diversity, equity, inclusion is one of the most important things that we can consider, not only for um, uh, our own generation here, but the generations to come. And we're happy we're able to talk about it a little bit on, the, on this edition of Pocono Mountains Magazine. And I'm Chris Barrett, again, for Pocono Mountains Magazine and the Pocono Television Network. Thanks for watching. Looking for a cool new place to stay in the Pocono Mountains? Well, look no further than Hotel Darby, right on the Delaware River. Find out what makes this place unique, coming up on Pocono Mountains Magazine. I grew up here in the Poconos, and now we're covering the Poconos on PTN. We go to all the big events, like the races. And we visit all the small towns all across the four counties of the Poconos. We know the Pocono roads and off-roads. But no matter how much we cover the Poconos, it is really hard to keep up with these two. Don't give up the ship! The Pocono Television Network, everywhere you are. And it's streaming live at PoconoTelevision.com. Hey, it's Jim Hamill, and on last month's Pocono Mountains Magazine, we showed you one of the newest revamped hotels in the Pocono Mountains at Promised Land State Park, the Rex. Now, we've got another one for you here, and over my shoulder, just over the hill here, is the Delaware River, and right next to it here is the new Hotel Darby from Foster Supply Company, one of the newest properties here in the Poconos where you can come and relax and then get out on the river, and get this, they even have their own pair of bald eagles. Finally here in the Poconos, we're really excited. Um, you know, growing up there was a lot of fun places that I used to go and it's fun to kind of now be part of it. Um, so yeah, we're just, we're just happy to be here. Hotel Darby is in, a, in an area, um, you know, sort of the intersection of Pennsylvania and New York that's in this moment of evolution. And to be here and be part of that, well, you know, Narrowsburg is, is growing and that's just around the bridge. Or if you go into Pennsylvania and all the towns there, Honesdale and Holly, are also having a resurgence. So we're kind of in that intersection, which is really awesome. Hotel Darby is a great place to stay for seasons out of the year. Um, we opened in the summer. And we also have different rooms, um, whether it's a family who wants to come and have an adjoining bunk room with their parents. We open up a door and it's like a mini home for them for a couple days or a really elevated suite where you're here for you know a special um, occasion and you have a soaking bathtub and you know you're down the hall and you have privacy so the the offerings we have in terms of rooms are so different 
And so what happens is you have an eclectic group of people here on any given weekend. You know, a lot of fun things to do. Um, our guest services team has all sorts of fun um, birding books for guests, and we even have a little like a bingo, like find find all the birds you can on property, and they really know the best about what kind of what's happening in the area. In the summer, the best thing, you know, we're right on the river in Delaware, so guests love to just walk down there, have their coffee, and then hop in a boat and go, go kayaking or tubing, wearing their life jackets, of course. While you have great common spaces and a fireplace inside, we have a fire pit and a rec garage, recreation garage, where, um, you know, Kids can go in there, grab a jump rope, grab a kickball. Adults can go in, grab cornhole. And we've had many guests spend several hours, you know, having a beer or two and playing cornhole. The reason we're here is because we love this area so much. It is where we call home and we want to bring people in and show them how amazing it is here. So um, yes, it's a place to rest your head, but really that's just kind of the starting stone and then we want you to, we want to spread your wings and send you out in the area and show you all the cool things there are uh, going on here. And there's so much cool stuff going on. St. Luke's knows that trust is the foundation of all relationships. It's earned over time. It's the type of relationship you should have with your healthcare team. While our healthcare needs are different, one thing is constant. St. Luke's is focused on building a lasting relationship with you, earning your trust and putting your well being first. When it comes to great health care, trust is essential. St. Luke's, the care you trust, now more than ever. Here in the Pocono Mountains, there are plenty of beautiful sights and mountain ranges to look up at, but sometimes the best views come by looking down. Uh, here we go. To feel most grounded, sometimes you have to go up. Way, way up. There's something calm and peaceful about the Poconos from 700 feet in the air with unobstructed views of the lakes, trees, and endless mountain ranges. What I think the unique part is, is you can drive around the Poconos and see the Poconos, but it's a whole different perspective in the air. Pocono Helitours offers year-round sightseeing trips, perfect for special occasions like birthdays, anniversaries, or proposals. Taking off from the Pocono Mountains Municipal Airport, the company provides four fixed packages, but the route is really customizable. A lot of people will come and they'll want to go over their house or their rental house, so we'll take them there. Wherever they want to go, we'll take them. In less than an hour, we traveled from Mount Pocono to the beautiful Delaware Water Gap and back. No traffic or red lights in sight. We flew over neighborhoods, major roadways, and well-known places like Great Wolf Lodge and the Shawnee Inn and Golf Resort. This business venture all began in 2005 with the opening of a flight school called High Tech Helicopters. Ten years later, the public air tours were added, and they've taken off. It was better use of the helicopter instead of not using it in between lessons we started the tour business. We'll be able to talk to each other 
on the headsets. The Pocono Television Network crew felt at ease with pilots Chad and Ben. They explain everything that goes into prepping for a tour, detailed inspections of the aircraft, weather and weight checks, plus precise fuel calculations. Absolutely, safety is key. Although the helicopters hold one or two passengers, Pocono Heli Tours can accommodate groups. The best part, flying with the doors off, making for an Instagram worthy view. There's been a lot of uh, development over the years here, and you think that it's very crowded with people, housing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You'll see a whole different perspective when you go in the air. It's not. There's a lot of woods, a lot of trees, a lot of area. Sometimes the best way to appreciate everyday life is by flying above it. Wow, those are some incredible views of the Pocono Mountains. It's amazing to see Great Wolf Lodge from up in the air versus here in person. And an air trip makes for the perfect Christmas gift. You can book your spot on PoconoHelitours.com. And if you want an overview of the entire Pocono Mountains from the comfort of your home, head to PoconoMountains.com. We just refreshed and upgraded the website so you can find out a lot of the cool things to see and do while you're here in the Poconos. And we hope you visit us for Thanksgiving and have a safe and happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there. That's right. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Pocono Mountains Magazine. We'll see you again next month. When you told me you love me down my mind. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the Pocono Tourism YouTube channel and click the bell button below to be the first to watch new videos. You can also click the link on the screen to watch more episodes of Pocono Mountains Magazine.